communication, we will talk about another important topic that is the transmission of analog signal and transmission of PAM signal. As if we have already understood that PAM signals are actually analog signals and pulse amplitude modulation has been done. Now, if we need to actually uh, need to transmit them, if we need to transmit a PAM signal, what we need to do is over a pair of uh, wire signal, then there is no further signal processing necessary. Now, if we are transmitting, if we are transmitting over or through wires, then did then. No further processing, further processing required. But if we are sending those signals through wireless communication, then we need to have this processing. Now we are talking about uh, wireless communication because most of the time, whenever we are transmitting a particular signal, this transmission of a signal is actually done wirelessly. That is the whole purpose of this signal because we wanted to cover more area. <coughs> Even if we are using the wired communication, <coughs> Even if we are using a wired communication, there is a possibility of losses in the wired communication too. So there is a possibility that if you are sending a signal through wired communication, noise will be there. So if we cannot eliminate the whole noise, so what we can do is we can send it over wireless. Now if you are sending through wireless communication, you are sending these signals wirelessly, wirelessly, then we need processing and we need this processing and they first needs to be actually first we they must be amplitude amplitude or phase modulated. What what is the first thing is amplitude modulated or phase modulated or frequency modulated. These are the thing and all these things are done by high frequency carrier signal carrier signal which we have already studied in AM, FM, angle modulation all these things guys like subscribe and share so whenever we are saying we are sending to amplitude modulation, this system is called PAM AM. Whenever we are using the frequency modulation, then it is called PAM FM. And if we are using the phase modulation, then it is called PAM PM. So whenever we are using a particular modulation technique, then it is called according. Now let's take one example and uh, so we will solve a particular e equation and the question based upon this PAM signal. Because in the exam, they are going to ask you numerical question based upon all whatever, all things which you have studied earlier. Now we have already studied Nyquist criteria, we have studied how this sig signal will be overlapped how this signal can be sent without overlapping, how this signal can be sent if the particular bandwidth is followed. So what we can do is we can understand these basic concepts. Like for pulse mod modulation, for example, one question. For PAM signal, for PAM signal, if FM is 3 kilohertz then calculate then 
calculate transmission bandwidth sampling frequency fs has been given as 8 kilohertz and pulse duration tau equals to 0.1 p second this is the pulse duration now what we need to understand is calculating the transmission bandwidth of this particular system now this is the PAM system FM is given as 3 kilohertz and sampling frequency was given as 8 kilohertz tau has been given as 0.1 t seconds this is the pulse duration so what will be the transmission bandwidth now as we know the TS equals to 1 upon FS and if you are talking about FS so 1 upon 8 into 10 to power 3 roughly calculating this thing and this will come as 0.125 into 10 to, 10 to the power minus 3 seconds or roughly we can say it is 125 micro second that is the sampling time now tau has given as 0.1 ts it is given so just put it over there so calculate the tau as 125 into 0.1 that is 12.5 micro second that will be the tau from the equation itself now the last sec another part the bandwidth should be greater than equals to 1 upon 2 tau let's put it over there 1 upon 2 into 12.5 again this is in microsecond so let's put it over there 12.5 into 2 that is 25 roughly and 1 divided by 20, uh, 25 that will come as bandwidth will be greater than equals to 40 kilo hertz just putting it over there it is a simple equation 1 by 25 again and here is 10 to the power minus 6 so it will become 10 to the power 6 Let's put it over there and 1 by 25 is literally 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 so 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 10 to the power 6 that is 4 into sorry <coughs> That is 10 to the power minus 10 to the power 4, and that is roughly covered as 40 kilo hertz. So we can calculate the transmission bandwidth if we have problem if we have the modulating as well as sampling frequency and the tau is there. We can first one need to understand this. This is this belongs to TS. The TS will define. There is no need of FM here because we don't need to calculate this. So if we have a sampling time, in the sampling through the sampling time, we can understand the bandwidth can be calculated. This is one question which came in our exams quite frequently. Now the next part to this: what are the drawbacks or disadvantages of this system? This PAM. What are the disadvantages of system? Is what? What is the first disadvantage? As we know, this is the error of system. So there will be a noise. Yes. We cannot get rid of the noise completely. There will always be a noise factor in this particular system. I hope you have already understood the concept of this analog signal. Whenever we are talking about analog signal, the noise part will always be on the higher side. In digital communication, the noise part will be on the lesser side. 
So this is that is the advantage of digital system. But in analog systems, which were initially designed, there were some drawbacks. But they were easier to make, and there were always a possibility that these systems can be modulated as per our requirements. And digital systems are quite easy once they were made, and the changes can be done. But over the period of time, initially, uh, over the period of time, they were evolved through this process. So first of all, what we need to understand is the disadvantage. Disadvantages of pen signal. Now, pulse amplitude modulation. What is the first disadvantage? Is the bandwidth requirement is requirement is very large. Now, if you are talking about the bandwidth, bandwidth is the most important thing in any any communication system, and bandwidth actually helps us to evolve a particular system or make a system very efficient. So, whenever there is a requirement of bandwidth on the higher side, it is always a drawback. Now, we if we are talking about FM and AM, that was the actual part where we were getting a signal without being distortion. But yes, bandwidth is actually very important thing. Decide whether a particular system is efficient or a particular system can be used over a period of time. Because uh, let's talk about last example. In the last example too, we were at the sampling frequency and uh, the maximum frequency of that particular signal was three kilohertz, but the bandwidth requirement was forty kilohertz. So to to send three kilohertz maximum frequency of three kilohertz signal. We need 40 kilohertz bandwidth. That is the minimum requirement. So 40 kilohertz bandwidth is required for transmission of that particular signal. This is the example which we, where we can see this. The amount over this particular signal has been actually transmitted, and the bandwidth requirement is literally that uh, more than 10 times. It, it is literally, to, uh, if you are calculating it, it is 13 times, 13.33 times higher than the normal signal. So if we need to transmit a particular signal, there is always a possibility that we need that much of bandwidth. So to compare to other signal, signal, the bandwidth requirement is very high. The second thing in the PAM signal, which is the disadvantage, is the amplitude of the PAM signal varies in accordance with the modulation signal. Now, amplitude is amplitude is modulating as per the modulating signal itself, and these pulses changes as we could have seen over there. Now, this amplitude is actually changes as per this amplitude of pulses, which is as per the modulating signal. So this is the biggest advantage because the noise cannot be removed. Noise cannot be removed easily. Can't be removed easily. The third disadvantage of any PAM system, if you are talking about a normal PAM system, the third disadvantage is the amplitude of, as we know, the amplitude of PAM varies, therefore, peak power requirement, peak power requirement, peak power requirement of transmitter is very high. These are the three disadvantages. The first one is the bandwidth requirement is very high, as we can see from the example. And the second one is the pulses will be changed, pulses and tune will be changed as per the moderating signal. So noise part cannot be removed easily. The third thing is peak power requirement of the transmitter is very high. So 
there is a possibility that the requirement of that particular transmitter where we are transmitting it is always on the higher side. If you are talking about a signal, the signal is if you are talking about a 3 kilohertz signal, the requirement is 40 kilohertz bandwidth. Now, if you are talking about uh, the voice signal, this voice signal can be vary from literally to, uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So, if you are talking about 20 kilohertz over there, then 20 kilohertz, it, the, this uh, this will be like 20 into 13. So, that is literally 260 kilohertz frequency. So, that much bandwidth is required. And that peak power for every time we are talking about a particular transmitter, the peak power of that uh, particular band signal is always on the high side. So these are the three disadvantages of band signal, and that is the reason we actually moved from band signal to other systems, where we can transmit a better system and we can have a better efficiency. Now this system is called PTM. And uh, PTM, this system, the next system is called PTM, and that is called pulse time modulation. Again, we will study PWM. It is pulse width modulation. These two system will be studied afterwards. So we will talk about this in the next lecture. I hope uh, you will you will be you will feel that these systems are quite easy and you will feel the lectures quite efficient because what I am telling you is this that in the PAN system or PTM or any kind of pulse modulation system there is always a possibility of noise. So these are not the uh, these are not the most efficient system, but they were the evolved, most evolved system at that point of time and they were evolved. And these were better than uh, the last systems like, that is AM, FM and PM. So these are the this evolution part where, where this particular thing has took place. Now if it has taken place, sorry. Now if you are talking about all these systems, they, they were actually the system was actually evolving every time we are talking about the system we are actually moving towards the lesser noise part so we are getting a better efficient system each time we are we are making a particular system and whenever we are utilizing that particular space particular time bandwidth we have a better multi multi, multi touching of that signal so this is how the whole system has evolved so we need to understand that the next part of this uh, topic which is the pulse time modulation and the pulse width modulation will help us understand how these two different systems will actually uh, help us to determine the better efficiency and better system to transmit a particular signal.